about the back side of my home. Um, I've already pressure washed the back of the house and I pretty much stripped the home clean and I have to go ahead and um, um, sand it all down. Um, you cannot stain on top of pressure wash and I'm going to show you why. Um, so here you go. I need to show you the process of pressure washing the home. I have done it before. You've guys seen it if you've seen my videos. Um, there's a special cleaner that we use that goes on here and then you pressure wash it. Um, basically, it's hard to see, but you're going to see like hard, uh, like sands, uh, um, wood spurs or whatever you want to call it. It's in here. We will be sanding this down. I'm going to break out the sander today and we've got to sand this. And uh, guys, when you do these homes, um, the wood is still kind of a little damp in some areas. I have a moisture tester. It feels a lot better today. This is two. This is the third day since I pressure washed it. Um, you don't want to stain it if there's still moisture in it. So you gotta let it set. But the big thing is, is when you pressure wash your home, it looks white, looks great. But like if I waited three more days, this wood would start to turn yellow. The wood would start yellowing. So the goal is, is I need to start my sanding. I'm gonna start over here. Lightly sand these. You can see how it looks kind of rough. Right there, we're gonna take care of all that. And uh, we're gonna sand these all down. This side here was really bad. Get everything sanded down like it needs to be, lightly in those areas. The, the whole wall will be done. And then we will go ahead and put on a coat or two of stain. Like, I'll give you an example. I won't be staining all the walls, but I'll show you. Okay, if you look here, this wall looks good. Here needs stain. So what I will do is, like here I hit and some came off. So I'll lightly put this little bit of stain, maybe on a rag, we'll lightly wrap it, uh, uh, wipe it down. But if you can see here, the stain come off real easy. And then all of a sudden, at this point, the stain looks good. So what we're gonna have to do is one coat will go here, on this, all the way through, okay? And then the second coat, I will go because there's no there is no clear on here it's all gone it's all off let's set that one up and then i'll go through and do another light coat on top of that so it kind of blends in to what this looks like the same thing with over here all right i've got my orbital sander i'm using a 180 grit i'm using this board to go underneath here so when i hit this I'm not hitting the logs like I have I've done a couple times here and there. I just started seeing that. But let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and hit this one right here. Okay, let me let me do this. So you can see it's pretty, it's really smooth and no longer has that real rough texture to it. We're back to where the logs would have looked like from factory. Nice and smooth. Putting that this cardboard down here works good. You just gotta be careful if you see that edge, you don't cut through. We're fine, but it saves me from hitting here. You can see that. And then when you go to stain it, you'll see these marks. So it's better to have this in here, just like that. Then the sander hits that and it won't damage it. Looks good. Now I've got like the rest of this and all that down there to get going, guys. I've now sanded this whole side here, everywhere that needed to be done. All right, you can see the surface looks really good. I got rid of that real rough section that it had. Now we're gonna stain, put the first coat of stain on this whole side right here, all the way down, okay? Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get my sealer and we're gonna start filling in all these grooves. Do all of them. All the way across. 
I'm just going to start filling all these in. And when I get this side done, I fill them all in. I'm hoping that this stain will be dry. And then I can go ahead and fill all the grooves over here. Once the grooves are filled, it will kind of, let's take you over here. The lighting would be better over here. The stain, the, the sealer, the chinking stuff is paintable or stainable. Oh, uh, you can see right here. See it right there? It is stainable. So we'll fill everything in. All right. And then, um, then you can stain over it and it kind of hides it. Give you a better pick of it. You can see up there, the sealer. Up there in that crack, it all looks good. And up there. And once all that caulking's in, then I will go and start staining everything. Put another coat on the places that I did sand. Get a coat two on them. And we'll determine if everything else looks good. And then from there, once that's done, we'll put a clear on it. All right, I want to talk to you about staining. If you can see, I've already started staining here. And you see I kind of feathered down a little bit. And that's because when I put my brush down here, a little bit touched here. So what you're trying to do is you want to feather right away your stain. So let me put some stain on here. I'm going to put the stain on a heavier in this area and then work this way and then come back this way. The, a little stain goes a long way here. You can see I ended the stain at this end of a log and I blended it. So now I'm going to carry on this direction over here and we'll get this all stained. So on, like I said, very minimal stains needed and I'll lay the stain right here and I'll work back to it. I don't want to put a big glob of stain at the end over here. And I will go ahead and touch it and blend it this way just a little bit. Now, if you look, I think I touched right here. So, because I, I don't want no that to stay there. I want it to blend easy. So right now, I'm just going to put a line across there. Kind of blend it a little bit. And we're good. Okay. We did some blending here. So now I'm going to continue on this way here. Just a little bit of stain is all you need on, is on your brush. Less is better. All right. I want to show you I just made a big mistake. And I'll show you to you in a second. Let's get this spread out first. You can see how far the stain goes. It's a long ways. All right, I got to take care of the problem I just made. You notice, you see all those drip marks? If you leave them there, say 10 minutes, you'll never get the color again. It'll dry darker. It'll look like dirt. So we need to take care of that right now. So what we're going to do is just hit it. You can see how it's still there. Keep pushing on it. Keep spreading it. That's gone just about. We're good. We hit right here too. Got to do the same thing. And we have a little tiny one right there. So we're good. Now I'm just going to make sure I can blend. And that's what happens if you get a little too much on your, your brush. Looking pretty good. Just going to show you this. I'm out here working and staining. And right there's a deer. And I was just talking to Frank. Frank and Tina. Just talking to him for a second. And there it is. There's the deer. They'll all be around for dinner here in a bit. He's an hour early, or she is. But that is the one that usually lays out back. She probably lays back, right back in that area. Right between those two trees. Then all the way over, right in that area. So, all right, let's get staining. I have been 
filling in my checks. My, they call them check marks, checks, I guess, where there's cracks in the wood. I have a special tube sealer that I use, which is NZ Seal. It's color coded. Okay, this is stainable. So when you're done staining, if you keep putting color, as you can see right here, you see it kind of matches really good. It goes with it. No, you don't even notice it when you're walking by. It, so I could put another coat on it if I wanted to. But here you go. We are uh, filling in the cracks. As you see, I've been doing a bunch all up in here, all through here. Now when the larger cracks come in like the here, or like these right here, these are pretty big. These are uh, 7 16 cracks. Okay, what we need to do here is we need to add backing rod. What's backing rod? Backing rod is a filler. We don't want to fill that whole crack full of, full of uh, that energy seal. So we have backing rod. It's like a foam. It comes in a, um, it's this here, uh, where's my bag? I'm gonna take you guys on a ride. I bought this at Lowe's. It's a backing rod. There's different sizes you can get, quarter inch, um, all in. I believe this is a half inch. Can't see the mark on it real quick, but anyway, you can get these in different sizes. I mean, you can get them really small, really skinny. I've always just bought the big one. I take a razor blade, as you can see, and I just cut them down the size I need. I just buy one kind. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this and we're going to fill in this groove in here all the way across and then we'll put our sealer on it. So let's go ahead and fill this in. Okay, I've got my backing rod and all I'm going to do is just use a screwdriver and I'm just going to stick it in here and I'm going to force this stuff in there. And what that's going to do is once we have it in there, if you think of it, it makes common sense. Your sealer is going to stick to this, your side, both sides, and now the backing rod. So you now you have three sides that it's going to connect to. So we're going to keep on going, stick this in here. Make sure it's past. It is lower than you would because if you don't and you put the sealer on it, you'll see the black if it's sticking too high up. So we're just going to keep right on going. Fish that on in there. Skinny screwdriver will get it done. And once you can't, it gets harder to push it in there. I just cut it off, I pull it and be done. There you go. And that's so fine, we'll put sealer in here. Now I need to do this one right here. Won't need much there. I pull it out of there already, snapped it. All of this is foam. There we go. So, and that seal will go right there. Now I'm going to keep on going right here and get all them filled in right here. And usually what I do, so you guys see it, this here is about three foot long, okay? So I usually split one right in half with a razor blade, holding my hand, and then I just go around and start pushing it in and cut it as I need it. So it's a lot easier than doing one piece at a time because you don't need to get all these gaps because you can fill it right in no problem. Keep on going. As you can see, I'm just going to pull it off, be done. Now I'll just make sure all of this is lower than the logs. So let me get going, and when I get done with all of it, up to about that point, then I'll bring you back and we'll start filling these in. All right, as you can see, I got them all in there. Nothing sticking out. We are going to fill in everything all the way up to here. Where's the uh, the sealer? And let's get that on there. All right, I do want to show you two things. Okay, if you look here, that's a small hole. And if you look there, that's a bigger hole. Okay, now I use the bigger holes for these here. Okay, and I'll use a smaller tube for this type of stuff right here. Let me, oh, you're not seeing it? Hold on, let me pick you up. I'll use a smaller tube for this stuff right here. You don't need to be smearing all that extra sealer all over the place. All you try and do is get it right in the hole and go. And I'll show you how you remove it after. So let's go ahead and get this tube in the caulking gun. Don't worry about making it too messy. All we're gonna do is stick it in, kind of stick it in a hole and we wanna fill that area. 
and then lightly push them here, we're done. Now we're gonna continue this way. We're gonna squeeze the gun, and we're gonna, I'm kind of tilting it sideways so I can see the hole, uh, how much I'm pushing in, but you do wanna put, put enough in there to cover it. So let's keep running going, we picked up and continue. You'll see what we're gonna do after. Now, I'm gonna show you the secret weapon. Dollar General spatula. That is very rubbery, very flexible. Okay, see it? Okay, now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna push it on the wood, and I'll go smear it on there. We'll just smear it nice and easy. So watch, we're gonna just grab that sealer, and all we're gonna do is squeeze it in there. Just take it, go slow. Don't worry about the mess. If you find a spot you missed, just continue. We have a whole bunch left over. I have a tub. I put that in like this. And if I wasn't showing you guys this right here with the with my caulking gun, I would have used that to fill these holes in and done the same thing. But I wanted to show you the way that I do it with a caulking gun. So we have a little extra laying there. We have a hole open. Okay, now, to get even some of the extras off, I'm gonna start way down here at the end. You may not be able to see it, but once I get closer to camera, I'll show you. I've got the thing pushing straight on it and I'm dragging it, pushing kind of hard. All right, and I'm taking up the extra sealer, okay? And as you can see, it don't look that bad, but yes, we have that, so you wait and watch. You see how nice and clean those joints are? We're gonna do the same thing right here. Now, this does take a little time. I have a bucket of water. I have a wash rag that's right in there right now soaking. I have, oh. We got deer coming around. Must be near dinner time. They're out there. There's one there and there's one over there. Wash rags in here, but I just wrung one out right there and it's wet. We use those. And all we're gonna do, on the smaller grooves, probably up to about this point, I just go right on top and rub it. And you can see it's going away, okay? Looks almost like brand new. Now, the next ones that goes on, I have to do different. And just lightly go under it. And keep rubbing it. You're not getting it perfect yet. You just want to remove all the excess if you can. Get rid of some of the stuff. Keep this clean. You see it's looking good. And remember, if you make a mistake, all you got to do is add more on top and you're good. Now we're going to go on top. I can't see what I'm doing, but I know I'm pretty close. And I'll come back and I'll look to see what we need to touch up. Now, if you look, it looks pretty good, but we're getting there. It's not quite, because now I'm gonna go across these grooves, these, these splits. We're gonna clean them up a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna fold the rag again, and I'll just keep going back over. Does it take time? Yes, it does. But when it's done, it's done right. It looks good. You don't notice it. And we're good. Now, I have seen some channels. They talk about putting the stuff on after they do everything. I've seen some channels put this, this sealer on before they even stain it. And I don't like that at all. Big thing is, is because the glue that you're using will actually stain the clear, the brand new wood in your stain. <sighs> this stain is a special stain. You just don't go stain. It's through a special company. It the stain is made. It's this one is Lifeline Ultra Two. Um, they have a whole bunch of different ones that you can get. This is through Permachink right there. Permachink's on the bottom. I will put it all listed in the description. And there's my color. It's natural. Okay. Um, 
the stain <coughs> when we're done staining we're going to put a clear on it the stain is a makes the wood able to breathe you do not paint log homes because it cannot breathe you want the moisture that gets in the log i mean when we gets moisture out humid humid it will get in the logs you want that to come back out if you don't you have, you'll get wood rot so this is a special stain it's not something you go buy at the store you will lose you cannot buy the set lows or nothing it's you have to order it up and it only comes in i think five gallon buckets and same as the clear and i'll show you i'll give you guys a link at, at the end of the video um, about where I got the stain. Um, you can get them anywhere really. There's all kinds of divisions right here. It shows a like western, eastern Minnesota and Montana. All right, I am on my third coat. This is, uh, this is my second. I'm going to start my third. I'm going to start here. It's easy to get the camera right here in the ground. I'll show you what we do. Trying to show you if you can see that that this stuff is like a whitish color okay but it dries clear and i will show you what the the chemical or the, the what we use for the clear the gloss coat all we're going to do is get a thick brush and we're just going to put it on now this is the this is the third coat so this slides on super easy when you have the uh bare wood you can feel the difference it doesn't glide as easy it, it's kind of rougher but so that's what we do right there. We just put it on. You can see it. It looks, you know, white bubbly. It will evaporate to look like this. Let's do this one too. Just use up what's in your brush. Believe it or not, the lighter the coat you put on, the better it covers. So there we go. And you can tell it's almost going away now. It's almost clear. There you go. This brush is a special stain brush. It's very old, and it's six years old, and I keep using it. it Works great. So there you go. We're not too worried. I mean, I'll knock that down. There, the little bubbles. That's okay. But as you can see, look at it right now. The color, how it looks. Get you a close up. You can see it. Just looks really good. The shine will go duller. Let's see what we got over here. You'll still keep a shine. This is just a hair dirty. Has been washed in a few months, about six months. But you can see, and that's it. Once I put this coat on, I'm this right here underneath, as long as I wash it at least once or twice a year, I won't have to touch this part of the house probably for at least six, eight years. Have, I won't even have to strip it for probably 10 years as long as you keep your clear on because the clear does wear off as long as you keep clear on there all you just put clear and the clear goes on fast you've seen what i just did there you go and it's just about dry right now it's getting tackier now i just started here i have got to put the last final coat all the way down third coat so that's what we're going to do and then we'll be done with this for a long time. All right, guys.